we need you to keep in mind that when they do get out, we're going to medically evaluate them uh, more extensively than Austin EMS is evaluating them once we, right now. So we need to medically evaluate them, let them have time with their families. We know you all are going to be excited and you're going to want to talk to them. We'll let you know when we will be available if they want to talk at all. They're going to be very, very tired. Our advice, Austin EMS's advice, is going to be absolutely go to the hospital and get checked out. Uh, but they're going to want to see their families. Uh, we'll let you know when they get close and uh, we'll get you as close as we based upon their work. Was is, is the, the three individuals are going to be escorted out within three hours of their uninjured members to death as a confirmation? I believe it was the civilian team or the civilian members that was part of that initial team that went in six hours ago that found them. We got notification from Austin officials. It was probably that private team. And uh, the numbers again were pro five private citizens, uh, six Austin firefighters, and three paramedics. And they were all mixed together, so it wasn't really separated. It was probably that civilian team. We were staged all throughout. Oh, this is this is as best we could have hoped for. Initially, we had said the earliest we would hear any word. If they had moved all the way to the back of the cave, would be five o'clock. And, and I honestly didn't expect to hear anything solid until about eight. And. This is the whole focus of, of a rescue operation like this. That's why it's slow, it's methodical, uh, just for such, this type of outcome. It's, it's, it's the entrance to a very narrow part of the cave. It's, it's about midway through. It's an area called Karen's Crawl. It is literally about a 500 foot crawl basically through about the diameter of a sewer pipe. And they were somewhere in that vicinity. I don't know if they were in the middle of that or towards the end of the that they had the ground going right now through the back So that's, that's all the information we have. Uh, the victims are uninjured. Our crews are, are safe. It, it does not get any better than this. Especially yes. before nightfall, because that adds a whole another dynamic that we just don't know. So this is definitely really what's happening. It's approximately five o'clock. First okay. of all, your name, sir. My name is Frank. Common spelling: Urias. U R I A S. And you with? I'm a division commander with Austin Travis County EMS. Tell me what you had. To do. Okay. Approximately five o'clock this morning, we were notified that uh, initially reported three cavers were overdue by a friend. We initiated an initial search uh, and rescue mission at that time. Uh, we did get false information that there was a fourth that we just found out from uh, the, uh, the people that went inside that there was never a fourth person. Uh, this was a very extensive operation just due to the logistics of this particular cave. Uh, it is very, very narrow. It is t about 12,000 feet long. There are many tributaries to it that all have to be individually searched. Uh, so it was, it was quite difficult. Approximately 20 minutes ago, we, we got the good news that, uh, that they had been located, that they're uninjured. Uh, however, it will still take us approximately three hours to uh, assist them out of, of where they are. They're about at the midway point in this cave. Uh, but again, you know, it, it was a, a very good outcome. This is the one that we always strive for, and uh, we, we couldn't be happier. This cave. I mean, most people think of a cave as something large enough to stand up and walk into. Yes. That's not the case. No, the and, and I think that's a misnomer that many people have. Uh, this one is particularly, there are many uh, sections of it where only uh, our smallest rescuers can fit through. We, uh, that was one of the prerequisites for the entry teams that we sent in. Many of the, uh, of the crawlways, and that's all they are, are about the size of a standard drain or sewer pipe. Uh, 18, 16 inches in diameter, uh, and it's and it's quite an extensive system. There are some open areas, but it's it's not at all what people think of in terms of caves. Have you ever had anything like this, this cave before? Uh, we had a rescue approximately two years ago with a, a person that was uh, about two hours into it, and they had just become exhausted and dehydrated, and we we hydrated them inside the cave, and then assisted them out. 
but but nothing of this magnitude. What, uh, what kind of logistics? I mean, manpower. What's what's needed for something like this when you get a call like this? Well, you have to start thinking in terms of. of your first operational period, which we consider the first 12 hours, then what do you do after that? You have crews that are going to have to be relieved. In this situation, it was unique in that because of the time it would have taken search crews to actually come back out, we made a decision to rehab them inside the cave and had to shuttle in food and water so that they could continue pressing forward rather than, than waste valuable time having to come all the way back out. And it's, it's providing all of that. Radios do not work at all underground. And so it was a telephone system that, that we laid down, approximately 6,000 feet of hard telephone cable, and that only went about halfway. So there's, there's all sorts of dynamics. Uh, lighting, of course, becomes a major problem, and we always, you know, our rescuers carry a minimum of three lighting sources, and then you have to consider extra batteries. Uh, all the merit of things that, that accompany something like this. Well, these rescuers are familiar with working through caves and such. It's not like yes. a common like Houston or something like that where you've got the experience with the caves. Yes, here. all of our public safety agencies here have rescue teams that uh, specialize in, in all sorts of different scenarios, including cave rescue. What about temperature down there? And you're saying well, 12,000 feet. Now we're saying down or just kind of horizontal? Or it's what? horizontal. It's about 100, ranges about 150 to 200 feet down. And it's a constant temperature of 68 degrees, and while that sounds very cozy, it uh, does produce hypothermia, uh, you know, especially for as long as they have been in there. Uh, you can get quite cold. Any so, signs of hypothermia? No. Like said by, by all accounts, they seem to be in good health. And like I said, it, but it will still take us about three hours before we can bring them back out. Males, females? There are two males and one, I mean, excuse me, two females and one male. Approximate age range? Uh, between 19 and 20. This is uh, South Lamar. This is Loop 360, Ben White. And about where were they found? Is it about halfway, halfway point? Someone said Karen's Crawl. Yeah, that's what you said, Karen's Crawl. Where is that? Right in there? Actually, it's quite long. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, it's actually kind of pretty back there. What's your name? Uh, Chris Thibodeau. Chris, tell me a little bit about this cave. Going in, what it looks like. I mean, type of conditions in there? Uh, honestly, when people ask me to come here, I'll say I'll just stay home and do 10,000 push-ups instead. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's uh, long, mazy, very tight, you know, but it's got some interesting places in it. Uh, uh, it is one of the, actually, one of the longest caves in Texas. It's like, like number nine. Longest cave in Travis or, County. It's like number nine on the whole Texas list or something, isn't it? Uh, it's a top, close to top ten. So it's a long cave, but it's a, it's a small, uh, it is physically challenging because you're literally crawling on your hands and knees a lot or on your belly, uh, doing the... Uh, you know, stoop walking, but uh, it's a popular place to go to learn how to do cave exploring. What's the big attraction? Uh, you know, I still haven't figured that out, honestly. Uh, uh, I, it wasn't, you know, for me going into caves wasn't anything that I just thought I had to do. It just, I think the first time I ever dug open one myself and was the first person in there, that, that became the attraction to me. Um, but uh, uh, I don't know, it, it is an exploration thing, even if you've never been to that cave, if many people have, you've never been there, and uh, uh, it's challenging, exciting to find out where you're going, learn, learn your way through it, and uh, uh, you know, it is physically demanding, you got to be mentally aware, physically fit, reasonably so, uh, kind of learn your own limits and things. What about temperature and clothing in there? I mean, you'd say it was constant temperature 68. Uh, yeah, uh-huh, and it's very high humidity, so honestly, when you're uh, 
uh, ex you know, exerting yourself. Uh, you're quite warm, you're sweating. Uh, it's only when you would stop uh, and rest for a while uh, that you cool. I don't think you'd really have to worry about hypothermia too much, um, unless for some reason your body might be susceptible to it. Uh, uh, you just kind of feel cool. Uh, so, but if you're moving around, you feel real hot. You know. That's what, 12,000 feet all the way back. How long did it take you on that? Uh, it, was, uh, <laughs> it was a long time ago. Uh, I was much younger then, and it uh, took me about nine hours. Nine hours in and out? Or just in and out, yeah, yeah, round trip. Uh -huh. What do you think these guys were up against today? Just uh, not familiar with it or just got tired or what? Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, I don't know. They could have been unfamiliar with it. It is very mazy in places. Uh, and they're all, the, all the routes are very well traveled, so it's kind of hard to tell which might be the main way to come back. Uh, so they, getting lost is, is very easy to do in the cave. Uh, How can you not get lost? Like How can you not get lost? Uh, you know, after you do it a while, you kind of learn tricks, I think, to, to figure out where you're going, where you're coming back. You know, the geology can tell you a lot in itself, uh, which way to go. Um, uh, a lot of times, you know, if you're not sure which way to go, you can you can do a little trial and error thing and learn out pretty quick if you're taking the wrong route and then go back. Uh, 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 you know, experience just kind of, if you gain experience, you can really what kind of, learn. What kind of things do you see back in there? Oh, well, you can see some fossils uh, in uh, some of the walls and roof uh, back, way back in there. There's some real interesting fossils. There are some cave formations, uh, small ones. You know, this used to be, uh, it's an old spring entrance, so water used to flow through it pretty heavily, and that tends to erode the development of a lot of, you know, what we think about when we picture caves, the big formations and things like that. Uh, uh, there's, you know, mud and dirt in there. There's some... One room has uh, a lot of red clay in the floor, and it's not too far in, so a lot of people will come in and grab that red clay and make sculptures on the walls with it, and some people are pretty talented. Uh, they spend a lot of time back in there doing that, uh, uh, and uh, you know, it's interesting. Um, but, you know, the cave itself is really nothing all that spectacular other than that it's long uh, and mazy. Your son is Jeff. Yes. One of the guys. Well, the one of the guys in the cave here. Yes. Tell me, you're from San Antonio, right? Yes. Tell me how you heard about this and your reaction to it. Well, two of his buddies from San Antonio came to the door. They were in San Antonio, um, the home for the weekend, and happened to look at the news and saw that there were some spelunkers missing, and came to the door looking for his car because we knew he had. They knew he had been. Um, spelunking yesterday that he had left and so when we couldn't get a hold of him then we started calling around and got a hold of somebody that verified that it, that he was one of the ones and we got up there as soon as we could and the team here is amazing UT was here a representative was here um, the rescue was here and they did an amazing job of walking us through where they could be what would happen what could already have happened um, and then the team that they already sent down so that's what we knew at that point and then when we found out they were, of course, with the, you know, the team had found them, we were thrilled. So. What was your thinking all the way up here? I mean, once you realized it's them? I'm not sure. You go into shock a little bit, you know, and just kind of get here as fast as you can, uh, safely, and then go from there. Of course, I know that he's in God's hands, and there was nothing I could do, and I knew the team here was doing as much as they could do. So that was exactly what we wanted to hear, and we just were praying and waiting. And what about, he's an engineering student? He's yeah. an engineering student. But, uh, I'm not going to take off Saturday. <laughs> oh, let's go to <laughs> 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 He was just in there yesterday.
that cigarette. It's, it's, it's a crazy thing when water's flowing through it. Oh, yeah. That's a nice spring. That thing's dirty or not? Yeah, it is. Another month been a great time of year for this. Yeah. Cooled off a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm about the water, the humidity be down a little bit, and the temp be down a little bit. See the water flows up around here? Oh, yeah. It's up a little bit. Yeah, I bet it's... It couldn't have been too long ago either. Go around the other way. Sure looks it. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely is. Passing. That's where I thought they'd be. In the loop. Yeah. They were stuck going in circles. They were actually going. You and for kidney to make contact with the brother. Yeah. I, well, actually, we were taking a break, and I just went ahead, and uh, they were heading away from me. In fact, I had to catch up with them. The the people lost in there. They were still just going in circles. Just going in circles. Okay. Yeah. So they hadn't been sleeping. At all they there. they did they did sleep a little bit. They said they were out of water. They had food, they had light and everything, they were just out of water, real thirsty and uh, a little tired. They had no idea really what time it was, their watch wasn't working right. One of the girls was supposed to be to work at like four hours ago or something. <laughs> Some of her people are here. Um, well, good job. But there was only three of them in there. Yeah. I thought there was four. Yeah, it turned out that one of the names was a duplicate. She goes by sometimes her middle name. Oh, uh, okay. So they had some confusion about that. So who's with you coming out? Bill and Julie. Bill, and Bill Russell and Julie. They were right behind you. Well, they're back there a little ways. Mike says O-N. O-N. It was a guess. Uh, Mike Hole. <laughs> Mike Hole. H-O-L-E. H-O-L-E. One word. Mike Hole at austin.rr.com. Austin.rr.com. Austin. Before you leave uh, anywhere off of the premises, check in with the command post up there. All right. Take your time, get your breath, get some. Right. Yeah, they were they were a little lost and just uh, couldn't find the the correct passage to, to make their way back out of the cave. Are you just a volunteer caver who helped the firefighters? That's it. I'm just a volunteer. What is your name, sir? 
Michael Sisson. Spell your last name, sir. S I S S O N. Tell me, when did you, when did you start the search down here? I showed up here at about 11.30 and uh, kind of went over things with them and uh, didn't go into the cave until about 1. How much experience do you have with this cave, particular cave here? This cave, I come to it quite a bit. I, you know, I'd say I've probably been into this cave a hundred times. Physical agility a main factor in this one? Yeah, this is quite a physical cave. It's not real technical or anything, but it just, it's a physical cave. They were okay though, right? I mean, yeah, everybody is just fine. They were just a little dehydrated is all. What do you want to do right now? <laughs> I'm going to go for a swim in the creek over here. <laughs> smoke a cigarette. Yeah, that's in smoke. How'd you come across them? Uh, one of the, the fire department guys and I were just taking a break and... Uh, I just decided to start, you know, doing a little uh, loop there, and I started yelling and heard him yelling back and just had to catch up with them. Were they scared? Did they ever say that they were just scared about where they, they were going? They weren't scared. They... they were waiting for us to find them. That's exactly what she said. It's about time. They were waiting for us to find them. So, you know, they did sleep a little bit, but for the most part, they were just trying to find their way out. And one girl said she had to be at work. Yeah, one girl was supposed to be at work at like two or something like that, and uh, their watch wasn't working, so uh, they didn't really know exactly what time it was. I told them it was four in the afternoon. I found them at four, and they had no idea. They said it's four in the afternoon on Sunday. They've been in uh, the cave for, I think, 31 hours right now, so they went in uh, 11, 11 o'clock yesterday morning. How long before they get out? I'm thinking probably another two hours or so, depending on you know how tired they are and stuff. But it's not an easy cave to get out of. Okay. Thank you so much. The Karen Crawl. Yeah. Hey Richie. Tom one. Hey Richie. Staging one. Hey, Richie. Staging one. <laughs> yeah, staging one is right, at the well, watching pad. Let us know when that catches up. Tell them if, if they yeah. want to leave that her, stuff. We we can and they haven't had themselves right here. Whether we want to or not, we have to. <laughs> Have they in a friend? Those four people left yet? Yeah, the end about. Make sure uh, yeah, the uh, uh, that Bill is here in front of him and keep an eye out for me if you still haven't seen him at the exit. In the market market. Nobody else not yet. I went to the I'll get info and I'll pull left. every one of them as they come out the side. I'll reach you to the other one.